Hey, I'm Nicole. In the summer of 2010, I was awarded a federal residency in central coastal Alaska to assist a handful of small native museums. My husband agreed to go with me with the caveat that he had to be allowed an attempt at growing a beard to look like a real Alaskan. <laughs> Despite rubbing Rogaine on his face every evening, a few layers of just for men gel and months of trying, he never quite fit in with the burly Russian fishermen at the bars. While he was growing a beard, I was mainly in Nanwalik, Seldovia, Katmai, and Kodiak, working intimately with local artists. It was here that I discovered a theme. Many of the artists were using video art to explore notions of connectivity across the Arctic Circle, a connectivity that extended beyond national and territorial borders, at times even aggressively rejecting national lines and interests dictated by politically constructed country boundaries. I began researching further and found artists in Nunavut, Canada, like Tanya Tagak, who creates work emphasizing the connections of ways of life throughout the Arctic Circle. In Finland, like Olaf Nordahl, who considers folklore connections throughout. Artists in Iceland, Greenland, Norway, Siberia, and Russia, all creating work on the theme of a post-national Arctic. Now what I'm talking about here is post-nationalism. Post-nationalism takes culture, economics, and politics of an individual nation and inserts these components into a global narrative. Post-national constructs, like the post-national construct of the Arctic, are shared beliefs and identity that exist outside of nationality, but contain individual relationships to identity and place. Post-national scholarship says that all communities are socially constructed or imagined into being. National boundaries, as inspired by an elemental essence of place, is a myth. I'm sure there's an angry uncle out there who would tell me to love it or leave it at that statement. Post-nationalism is particularly applicable to those who share the midnight sun and the polar nor north because of the incredible similarities that exist across this vast distance, created by ancestral and trade connections, parallelness of the Arctic climate, and histories of colonialism. Many Arctic nations share similar stories of imposed nationality, either without their knowledge or without their voice, as the world was carved up according to whoever chose to claim it and occupy it as theirs without concern for the indigenous inhabitants. Katarina Riopi, an artist from Finland with roots in Alaska and Russia, created the work Time Borders, an invitation to step into a long walk over a beautiful icy landscape. Two films show on the walls presumably of one location. Hundreds of thousands of a single species of bird nest on mirrored icy rocks and ledges. In reality, the two films were shot on two separate islands, Little Diomede Island, Alaska, and Big Diomede Island, Russia, 2.4 miles apart. Between the two islands lies the border between two countries, the US and Russia, between two continents, Asia and North America, and the International Dateline. 23 hours apart when it is Monday on Little Diomede, it is Tuesday on Big Diomede. During World War II, Russia claimed the Big Island as a military base and relocated all indigenous inhabitants to the Siberian mainland. People lost their homes, they lost their families. Communication was completely cut off between the two islands. Like Katerina Riopi, the effective use of video art by border communities to find a voice is a growing phenomenon around the world. The global reach and symbolic appropriation of the technology of a dominant, often colonizing culture gives artists a medium from within which they can mediate and mobilize their cultural identity. In addition, video art holds many similarities to folklore. Folklore cannot exist as a single story, but must be dispelled by many in the same way that video art, unlike historic mediums of art, is played in repeating circles. Inuit filmmaker Zacharias Kanuk has said that he only uses video art because of the similarities it holds to Inuit oral traditions, a performative act of meaning and social interaction and communication. The work of these artists rings contemporary today because of conversations about drilling in the Arctic, a dialogue born out of a desire for political and power gain within national lines. Every member of each Arctic region will together suffer when national interests prevail to first attain the oil held under the ice. New boundaries will be laid, communities will be destroyed, ecosystems will change forever for political gain far away from those who inhabit the Arctic Circle. 
The artists that I've been working with are self-actualizing a post-national identity for themselves and others of the Arctic community, a perspective that focuses on collectiveness versus division, stewardship versus possession, a perspective that could speak loudly for the future of to the future of national interests for those who inhabit the community of the North. 